So they're taking another stab at Cat in the Hat, this time in animation, thank goodness. And apparently with Bill Hader in the titular role, which if you've seen the SNL skit, would be quite something. Yes, this is the latest in animated movie news of the future. And alongside the fact that Bill Hader is the up front and center character this time, something I think a lot of my following may appreciate is the fact that the director set to be attached to this movie is the same one of DreamWorks' cancelled Me and My Shadow project. I mean, I guess they all had to go somewhere. So it's good to know they've still got work. And no, interestingly enough, this isn't set to be an Illumination Dr. Seuss movie like I would have initially thought a Cat in the Hat project would be in animation. Instead, this is from Warner Brothers, of all things. <sighs> now, Dr. Seuss adaptations have always been quite the mixed bag, to say the least. Who knew translating a 50-page picture book into a 90-minute feature film would be so difficult? But now there's another spin at it. After the Dr. Seuss estate has said in the past, no more live actions, the Mike Myers project kind of ruined everything, to now being shipped to apparently multiple places for animation, this is the next direction, and possibly already doomed because Warner Brothers does not have the best track record with their animation projects. And you see, here's the thing, right? These books are bedtime stories, narratives that can fill the 10 minutes before your kids fall asleep, so they're inherently engineered to not be turned into a longer narrative with B plot lines going on, you know? This is a difficult prompt to handle. Not to mention, the world of Dr. Seuss is so wacky and unbound by rules and logic that tying it down into a sensible, bog-standard screenplay just doesn't seem the right way to go. At the very least, animation is the better format to showcase such <laughs> disregard of the laws of physics. But nonetheless, that hasn't stopped them from doing so, and there are two distinct tiers. There's the surreal, warped reality live-action route where we first had Jim Carrey's The Grinch, and though it's had its critics, I'd argue this is probably the most widely accepted and rewatched of the adaptations. I don't know how far Coco Melon Babies have rewatched The Grinch from Illumination. But of course, also in this live action category, most relevant to this news, is the last attempt at a Cat in the Hat movie from 2003 with Mike Myers. I guess when you consider that was over 20 years ago, at least they've waited a while to go back to that one. And you see, this one's interesting because the general narrative is this movie is a terrible adaptation of the book, which flopped at the box office, critics panned it, and for a while it was the thing to think that this movie was crap with a capital C. However, oddly enough, since the generation who grew up with this movie have reached adulthood, you now have a lot of people heralding it as a surrealist comedy masterpiece. I mean, I gotta admit, it's entertaining, e even if ironically. God, there's a lot of sexual humor in that movie. Whatever side you take, I think one thing that can be universally agreed on is that it very much digressed from the tone and innocence of the original book. But then on the other end, after the Dr. Seuss estate denounced that movie and blocked any more live action adaptations, you have the animated movies that followed. You had Blue Sky Studios, rest in peace to them, taking on Horton Hears a Who, also featuring Jim Carrey. Apparently he's just, he's apparently the golden child of this universe. To be fair, he is a living breathing Dr. Seuss character, so who's the judge? And that didn't do too badly. $300 million in 2008? Not bad. It's not quite the Ice Age money, which is probably why they did another three of them after this, but still. However, the studio who's very much defined the post-2010s take on Dr. Seuss have been my old chums at Illumination. You're fully aware of my take on this studio, though of course I did end up really enjoying Super Mario and even the last Minion movie, so I guess I'm open for change. However, I think it's fair to say that their stab at Dr. Seuss has been a tad Lackluster. This hasn't been more apparent than when they did the Lorax, a character who does not fit the vibe of Illumination's ethos as a business at all. I mean, they had the world's most famous eco-warrior be the sponsor of a completely gasoline-fueled Mazda SUV when promoting this movie. God, they do not understand the source material. That's like having Greta Thunberg front a BP commercial. And the movie itself sort of worked, sort of didn't. It's kind of usual surface-level Illumination stuff. And the same can be said for the Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch movie. Both very commercially safe run-of-the-mill movies, which is a strange thing to say about something adapting Dr. Seuss of all things. In many ways, when you look at this perspective, the live-action movies were actually a lot more successful of capturing that chaos and zaniness of Dr. Seuss despite the genre that they were in. Yes, they were full of innuendos and a bunch of people would still contend that they crashed and burned spectacularly, 
However, at least they did swing for the fences. Illumination's take may not have crashed and burned, but that's because they didn't make much noise at all. The best part of those movies was the fact that they could show an intelligent dog, that's about it. A good Dr. Seuss movie needs to capture that sense of whimsy and imagination. Many would argue that no one's got it right since the original Grinch holiday special from the 60s. A collaboration between Seuss himself and Looney Tunes legend Chuck Jones it's hard to argue that anything could be better. Thank you for making it halfway through this video. This is the time where I poke you to check below and see if you are subscribed. And hey, keep the discussion going. Let me know what you think of a Dr. Seuss Cat in the Hat animation movie. You think it's gonna be as terrible as Mike Myers or as basic as Illumination? Really, this could go in all sorts of directions. There's pros and cons in all sorts of forms. Let me know your thoughts and let's get back to the rest of the video. So, what exactly are Warner Brothers of all people planning with this animated Can in the Hat movie? Despite their Looney Tunes heritage, they are very much the dark horse when it comes to animated movie. They have no in-house animation studio to the same degree of a DreamWorks or a Pixar. And even when they distributed the Lego movies, they lost the rights to Universal. And then the studio they were working with, Animal Logic, got bought by Netflix. So what are they gonna do with this and getting back into the animation? field? Well, this has actually been in the works since 2018, but there were no serious updates on the project until last year. It is again under the Warner Animation Group label, renamed yet again back to Warner Bros Picture Animation, but again back with Lego Movie and whatnot, they did outsource the actual production to Animal Logic to do. Meanwhile, their other movie, Storks, was also outsourced to Rat Pack Dune Productions, which is a tad troubling as if you know anything about the director and studio head Brett Ratner, you know about all the allegations that lie at his feet. To be fair, following these allegations, Warner Brothers cut ties and stopped doing films with them, and yet still his company's getting bought on for stuff. <sighs> the movie that just won a couple of Oscars, The Zone of Interest, he was one of the companies behind that and would have been paid handsomely in those wins because he still owns the company. Anyway, back to Cat in the Hat. We'll park the Brett Ratner's an awful person chat for now. With the label going back to Warner Bros. Pictures Animation, it does seem to imply that they may begin going animation in-house again. Which would be the first serious dabbling they've done with that since, like, Iron Giant era. Currently, the one connection it definitely has is the Seuss estate itself. They've actually been operating as a company and produced Netflix's Green Eggs and Ham a few years ago. I guess when all other schmucks aren't doing it properly, you just gotta go out and do it yourself. Anyway, on the creative team, you also have the ingredients for a solid movie. Co-directing, you have Alessandro Corloni, who did Kung Fu Panda 3, and more importantly for this channel, was working on the Me and My Shadow movie. You've also got Erica Rivenoya, who's written with Sacha Baron Cohen for Borat 2 a few years ago. Admittedly, the rest of the resumes are a tad more concerning. It does include Trolls, the most recent Adams Family, and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. However, she is an alumni of the South Park Writers Room, so we shall reserve judgment there. As for the script, it's being penned by Rivenoya and Caroline Williams, who are the writers behind Arrested Development. Overall, I'd say it definitely has a lot of potential from the creative team. Definitely seems like they're going for it on the comedy front, to say the least. And yeah, reports are going around that Bill Hader may be voicing the cat. For those who haven't seen it, there's a great SNL sketch where the cat turns up only for a past affair between him and the kid's mum to resurface. Whether they made this casting based on that skit or not, I'm not sure. It would be an odd decision to base it off of that, but fair enough. And as far as the project goes, Dr. Seuss Enterprises had some very interesting comments on their grand plan. CEO Susan Brandt said, For the first time, we're not just doing one film for one book, we're going to franchise build beyond the initial story of these books and find out what happens next. So... They're doing a Dr. Seuss cinematic universe? Am I reading that right? I'm so tired of studio heads getting ahead of themselves on a franchise before the first ones even come out. So I really hope that's not the case, but it sure sounds like it. She followed that up with, I call it stretching the fabric. How far can it go to go a little deeper with our characters? Interesting. In fairness, this does go back to what I said at the start. These stories weren't written with this deeper character development or more complex narratives in there. So in order to get those deeper shades, you will have to go beyond these original bedtime stories. As long as they don't overthink the logic, because there is no logic to these characters. I don't need to have the cat in the hat be revealed as an ancient Egyptian deity that was the bringer of imagination and fun, okay? Warner Brothers, cool it, please. Whatever they decide to do, I'm cautiously curious. On the one hand, it's great that it's the Dr. Seuss estate kind of doing it themselves. 
This is a Warner Brothers animation production after all, and I'm just concerned with a Dr. Seuss MCU vibes of those final comments. Let's just make a good Can the Hat movie, folks. Is that too hard to ask? Or else I'll be forced to relive the Jim Carrey 90s again. Whatever the case, that is the news. We don't have a release date just yet, so we'll just have to see where things come out. I don't know, 2026, 27 probably? What are your thoughts on a project like this? You got high hopes or you got terrible ones? Where do you think it goes in that range? For now, I'd best end it off there. My name's been Daz. Thank you for making it to the very end. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the side. And I will see you in a little bit. Yeah.